On the latest episode of Conversations, we prepare for the launch of the eighth annual Middleburg Film Festival with two special guests, festival founder Sheila Johnson and festival director Susan Koch. Uh, Sheila Johnson is a businesswoman, co-founder of BET, CEO of Salamander Hotels and Resorts, and the first African-American woman to be an owner and par or partner in three professional sports franchises, DC's Washington Capitals, Washington Mystics, and the Washington Wizards. Susan Koch is an Emmy and Peabody winning filmmaker whose 10 films have allowed fascinating individuals to tell their stories in her documentaries. Her subjects rise up to speak their truths while she films them fighting their daunting battles each has in their lives. I am so thankful for the both of you guys. This is a conversation that we have every year on this show. Uh, this year we're doing this differently as, as you guys are programming your festival differently. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. This is such a pleasure to see you again. I mean, what a bizarre year this has been. <laughs> it, it has been. And I, I, was, I was telling Susan before you got here, uh, early in the year, I thought about you guys a lot. I was like, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull this thing off because I knew that Telluride was struggling. Huh? We can do anything. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so talk about the challenges. Uh, and I'll let both of you ladies talk about the challenges of trying to maintain a high level film festival in the middle of a pandemic. Well, first of all, we have the bones to make it all work. We have a beautiful resort. It sits on 340 acres. We got a, a great town that is very supportive. And when Susan and I started talking, there was not even an option of canceling this. I said, let's rethink and let's really think outside the box of how we can recreate virtually and in person this film festival. I said, we, we, we have everything going for us. And so we looked at the, the campus and we realized, first of all, we could do a drive-in because we have a wonderful parking lot and we were able to fit socially distant 50 cars down in the parking lot um, so they can do a drive-in movie. We're gonna do food trucks down there so people can pick up food. And then also, which I think is very creative, if you see the size of the screen that is sitting on the back lawn it's unreal and the sound is terrific. Um, I'm, as soon as I'm finished here, I'm gonna go over and check it. We have 30 rooms that literally face the screen and we have grand lawn uh, sitting so people can bring blankets and they can sit down socially distant. And so the people that don't wanna sit down on the lawn can watch from their rooms or they can go on and watch virtually through the television or through their iPads. So, uh, what I really want to emphasize, since Salamander opened June 11th, we have always been very, very careful about really maintaining the protocols that have been set by the state and the CDC. And we have never ventured from that. Our, our staff has been trained. Um, we sanitize everything. There's sanitizing station at every turn. Um, even our housekeeping staff. And if people still feel a little funny, they can bring their Clorox wipes and wipe down again. Um, we will do temperature checking. We're just gonna make sure from serving food to walking around the resort with mask that, and social distancing that everything, everyone is gonna follow protocol. So I wanna emphasize that you can feel very safe during this film festival. Now, of course, we don't have the masses of people like we normally have, but we have a critical force of, of film goers and they are, they're very excited about it. And then those that, you know, were and in the resort, they can watch it virtually. In code and they can then watch it virtually on their laptops or their iPads. All right, and for you, Susan, programming during a time like this, what was the challenge for you? Well, there's a there's a wide range of challenges. I mean, the first one is that, um, you know, the, the film schedules, as you know, 
Tim, were changing constantly as the distributors were trying to figure out when to release their films and films that we thought would be part of this fall Oscar season have now been pushed back. And then there's the distributors who only want their films to be screened in person. So, and then Netflix, of course, sat out of all festivals this year, uh, every festival. And although they're providing talent for conversations, they uh, virtually, they would not do anything in person. And of course, they now are uh, a big Oscar, Oscar player. That said, we are really excited about this year's slate. We have 24 films, and all but four of them are screening virtually. And you will find your Oscar contenders, and you will find your independent gyms, and your fascinating documentaries, and your international features. So I think our film goers can expect to see the same caliber of films that they normally do. Maybe a few less of the Oscar contenders, because they're not out there yet. But they, I think people may, this is a chance to discover some films that you might not otherwise get a chance to see. So we're, 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 really, uh, we're really thrilled in terms of how the lineup turned out. Well, the one thing that I can consistently, I'll oh, go ahead, Sheila. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Sheila. No, I really want to emphasize the diversity of our films. I mean, we are really highlighting a lot of African-American history with the Martin Luther King, FBI, um, that's a narrative, right, Susan? That's a doc. That's a doc. That's a doc. That's a documentary. Okay, and then we have Concrete Cowboy, which is a narrative, mm -hmm. and it's about the African American um, cowboys. There is an entire uh, stable that has been set up. I've seen this where they have inner city kids uh, really riding horses to keep them out of trouble. And there's, there's really two programs in Philadelphia like that. And in fact, I, I've actually had um, brunch with two of them because uh, they rode in the polo event out here. So we're very excited, you know, we're in horse country and they we're very excited about that. But uh, Susan's the one that's really seen all these films. I've just watched the trailers. No, 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 but and, I was gonna say, I was gonna say the one thing, you know, people, I know everybody talks about the Oscar, the contenders that normally play at Middleburg, but the one thing that I've seen, especially over the last four or five years strong, is that many of the foreign language uh, films that are usually Oscar nominated, usually always play, mm -hmm. like those finalists will all play at Middleburg and I always go looking through your schedule, where are the foreign language films? So I saw you have one from, I can't even pronounce the country, uh, the African continent, I mean the Ivory country. Coast. We have one from the Ivory Coast. Yeah, what is it, Night of the, Night, Night of, of the, the Kings. Night of the Kings, so I wanted to and see the, that. Well, the thing is, um, Tim, because everything's pushed back, right. we don't know what, the countries have not yet submitted, most countries, only a handful, only a very right. few have submitted their submissions for this year's, uh, for the upcoming Oscars. Night of the Kings is one. Mm -hmm. And we have a few others, uh, um, Farewell and More. Um, uh, we have, so we have, I'd say, you know, three or four international features. Right. And, you know, more will be coming out, but those are a little bit uh, later on. I think um, we have some exceptional documentaries this year. Sheila mentioned MLK FBI. We have The Dissident, uh, by, uh, directed by Brian Fogel, who did Icarus, who, and it's about the murder of Khashoggi. Um, and we have um, uh, a film about Billie Holiday. I, I have the personal favorite. Um, it's called Assassins. It's about the, the murder of Kim Jong-un's half-brother and these two young women were arrested for the murder and I'm not going to tell you any more than that because it's a great story. Um, I highly recommend 76 Days which is about the, the lockdown in Wuhan and um, Collective which is a Romanian film. That could be uh, Romania's um, uh, Oscar, Oscar Joyce, yeah. It's a doc, but it is, it's so powerful. So, um, yeah, I think you're going to find a, a nice, a nice mix this year. Yeah. Now you talked about Sheila, about the diversity, and I saw that as well. Uh, there's several films uh, that I've really heard buzzed about. Sylvie's Love with Tessa Thompson is a yeah. film that you guys are going to play. Um, I know, Susan, you had an opportunity to see it. Sheila, have you had an opportunity to see that one yet? I've only seen the trailer on it, and it is really compelling. It's mm -hmm. really compelling. I can't wait to watch that one. I mean, I love Tessa yeah, I've heard Thompson. heard great buzz. I love Tessa Thompson. And this is kind of a, 
you know, as you know, Tim, during fall Oscar season, most of the films, many of the films are a little bit on the heavier side, mm -hmm. um, you know, and um, Sylvie's Love is more a romantic drama, jazz infused. And uh, we uh, opted to put that as one of our opening night virtual films. It just, it's a, it's a really, um, it's a, it, I think people will enjoy it. And so opening night virtually, you'll have your choice of, you can see both of you on Sylvie's Love or 76 Days, and then Friday morning we release more, and then Friday afternoon more films, and Friday night, and so on, trying to recreate that feeling of a, of a film festival. And once yeah. a film is released, you have, uh, except for The Dissident, which has a three-hour watch window, all the other films you have 24 hours to watch. So um, I think people, we want people to make this an event just like they would if they were coming to the festival. And a lot of people have signed up with their friends and their family or their book club, and they're all going to watch films and then, you know, talk about them. And, and so that, and we have our own virtual filmmaker lounge where you can drop in and talk about films, either with our wonderful DC film critics like Tim Gordon, um, or, um, you know, or yes, or, <laughs> or others, yes. So, um, I, I, we really want this to, to recreate that sense of community that we feel is so important. And can I talk a little bit about the hospitality side? Because I'm sure people are wondering, where am I going to get our food? So we're actually delivering food to the hotel rooms so that they can watch the film and also have a cocktail and their, their dinner. And then occasions, uh, for those that couldn't get to the film festival, we're actually delivering the dinners to their homes. These are, for, uh, these are for our pass holders. You know, pass you know holders. Yeah. Sheila, Sheila Johnson, you know, I just want to say, of course the hospitality is going to be on fleet. It's always going to be great. We wanted to You're make delivering sure food to people to pass holders. Goers, we wanted to make sure that everyone was taken care of. And I've got staff who are still calling everybody to double check addresses to make sure that they get their dinners. Wow. I don't want any slip and Tim, ups. And to make sure that Tim wow. Gordon gets his festival swag. Yes. You know, Tim Gordon went home empty handed last year, and I'm not going to point any fingers of anybody that's on this call, <laughs> Sheila Johnson. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I will be there tomorrow night. And I wanted to talk about uh, opening night. Uh, you guys are starting off with a film that has been getting super Oscar buzz in Nomadland, uh, Francis, Francis McDormand, cannot wait to see this film. I've heard nothing but great things. Susan, I know you've seen it. Sheila, you've just seen the trailer. I know you'll tell I me know. that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know what's so great about this? <laughs> Susan does all of the homework. She, I, they look at every film, then they call right. me, they're going, we got to take this one. Right. But yeah, what's so great is, you know, then, you know, Sheila, you, you're, you see the films like our viewers do right. and get to experience that whole sense of discovery. Yeah. But um, she is involved every step of the way with us. Um, so Nomadland, yes. I mean, it's, it's, it took top prize at Venice and Toronto and for good reason. I think we're going to see, I, I'm, I think we may see a woman get best director this year. She could get best, Chloe Zhao could get both best director and uh, best picture. And we're, we're actually honoring her with our Agnes Varder filmmake, filmmaking, um, Trailblazer Filmmaking Award, which comes with a, a prize to mentor aspiring female filmmakers. But it's a, it's a wonderful story. It's, and Frances McDormand plays a woman named Fern who's, whose town is uh, just completely collapsed due to the economy and the company town closing and her husband has died and she packs up an old van that she's retrofitted and she becomes a nomad and um and there's this this marvelous community of nomads and and most of the other nomads in the film are actual nomads now the interesting thing to me is i know several years ago three billboards um played at at uh, middleburg did you was francis ever at middleburg did you no. guys have her no, but um, hopefully in the future, because she is an immense talent. She really is. I think this, she's won, you know, two Oscars in, so far, and this right. could be her third turn. Well, well, just for, for Susan and Sheila, you'll, you'll hear me say this. Macbeth is going to be her next film with Denzel Washington. So I think that's going to be really? next year's Oscar contender. So wow. you can get Frances McDormand and bring her 
Well, I'll let you. I got. I'll let you guys handle that. You guys do a great job of that. Denzel and her to come. Yep. So, That's and speaking of, <laughs> I was gonna say, speaking of your conversations this year, Aaron Sorkin is gonna be getting your screenwriter award, and George C. Wolf getting the director spotlight to Netflix. You know, you said earlier they didn't give you the films, but they gave you the talent. Um, so the new film, um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, yeah. which, which is a really a he did such a superb job with it. While we're not able to screen it at the festival, we have the conversation with George and the proceeds to the, from the sales of that conversation are actually going to be donated to Broadway Cares COVID-19 fund for, um, to help those who are out, actors who are out of work. Um, it's, um, and of course it's Chad, Chadwick Boseman's last role. And it also, so that's, you know, very moving. And it also stars an incredible Viola Davis. So that yeah. will be out in, in um, later on Netflix. Yeah. But in the meantime, you get a little sneak with George C. Wolf, or also the Legacy Tribute Award to Sophia Loren. There's a mm -hmm. phenomenal film that received our Ensemble Cost Award that is uh, only playing virtually. It's called Minari. It won, and um, I highly recommend Minari. It took the Grand Jury and Audience Award prizes at Sundance. So yeah, we, we have nearly a dozen conversations and I think people will really in, enjoy them. And I, did you, I, Chris? please do. <laughs> Chris Bowers. Chris is my heart. Um, you know, we had Chris Bowers here when we did um, uh, Green Green Green. And you know, he was the hands of Marshala Ali. Just a talented, talented pianist from Juilliard and he was he just won our audience over when he was here for green book we then invited him back last year um he's also become my musical ambassador for my hotels so when you check in it's his music so this year we're going to be honoring chris bowers as for our distinguished composer award so he actually recorded a concert um which will premiere virtually as part of the festival at Capitol Records in Los Angeles, playing on the same piano of Nat King Cole. Mm. With special guest Andre Day, who plays Billie Holiday and Lee Daniels' upcoming the United States versus uh, Billie Holiday, which Chris has scored. And it's really interesting because my husband, Bill Newman, who's an actor and a judge, is also going to be in the film. And um, it's really interesting because Lee called me. He says, I need to have this film scored. I said, I got just the person for you. And I gave him Chris Bowers uh, information. And, and then Lee called me back. He says, you nailed this one. I said, I told you. I said, I wish we had had him for the butler too. But anyway, I am personally very excited. I just think that this is a young man that you all need to watch. Um, on, for the horizon. I think he, as an African-American musician, he is one that's going to be so successful and he's so young. So I have a question for you, uh, Sheila. I know you're retired as a musician. Uh, could, you, could you give us a, a, a small concert, you know, a year from now where you and Chris do something at Salamander? Just something intimate, small, Give me a year. I've just also just taken up the cello to get through COVID. Mm -hmm. I've always really wanted to play the cello. I mean, I'm a violinist, mm -hmm. but I take lessons every week. And um, I don't know if you saw Leslie Foster's piece, but I was actually playing the cello on television and they used it as the background music. And I'm like, boy, I sound pretty good on that. <laughs> so maybe uh, in a year, I might be ready to do something in the living room. It's Salamander. Well, you know what's funny, Susan? Uh, people don't don't get a chance to see Sheila. Sheila during festival time, she's everywhere. You know, I, I remember, I think I was there one year. I'm not sure if it was last year, the year before. Uh, somebody was on the piano. You were singing. You were hanging out. So I'm like, yeah, give us something that we can work with, Sheila. I, you know, I'll pull out an iPhone. We'll record it. We'll get it up. Nick Fratell. Wasn't that with Nick Fratell? Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you know, so... Yeah, and then, some you know, I mean, Listen. music is such a big part of the festival. You know, right. we always honor a composer or a songwriter. And last year it was Terrence Blanchard. And I just, I, as Sheila said, Chris Bowers is, 
he is, he's really part of our, our Middleburg family now, but okay. and in addition to scoring uh, the United States versus Billie Holiday, he has scored the upcoming um, Aretha Fr Franklin um, biopic, and he was actually a protege of Aretha Franklin's, and they yeah. became very close. So there's a, a strong connection there. Can I just say something real quick about Terrence Blanchard, because I'm really excited about this. When the Met reopens, Terrence Blanchard's opera is going to open the Met. Nice. They've already called me about it, and I just, I couldn't believe it, because last year I opened the Met with Porgy and Bess, which was just phenomenal. So uh, they already gave me a heads up that they're going to do Terrence Blanchard's opera. All right, ladies. So we're now in the eighth year, and I am, uh, other than the two of you, I'm one of the few journalists that has attended every year that you've had this festival and watched it grow and evolve. Uh, as you guys are now sitting in this position now with this festival, which has now become a top 10 festival, it is kind of a must-see event every fall here in the, in the, here in the nation's capital and, and throughout the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. What are you looking at as the future? Because right now, and I know this is sort of rhetorical because the, the world continues to change and evolve and there's all this talk about the future of cinema and, and what it actually means. Will streaming services kind of become the new norm as people have been accustomed to watching at home? What, what is your vision, uh, Sheila, first for you and then Susan from a programming size? side of what you want to see for this festival's growth in, in these kind of uncertain times? Well, I think first of all, um, I love the intimacy of this festival. And I go to a lot of festivals and I think they're too large. You stand in long, long lines. And then they say, we can't fit anymore in the theater. Um, and it's pretty annoying, especially when you pay the money and um, you know they haven't controlled it that well. The thing that I love about the festival, first of all, we're in one of the most beautiful areas of Virginia. So the environment around it is just all consuming. It's, it's relaxing, it's wonderful. And I just love the intimacy, even though we get a lot of people there, we are able to take over the town to make it work. Now, what I really wanna see, I would like to find another venue within the town city limits so that we can add another theater onto that. And so I'm constantly talking with the town council and seeing what we can do. Um, and if we're able to get a lot more corporate sponsors, maybe we can keep an outdoor theater until we can, um, you know, find an indoor venue to be able to show films, you know, if the movie houses would like that. I, um, I just think that the quality of the films that are brought in, I mean, and, and I take my hat off to Susan and Connie, I just think that the homework that they do and the investigation that they do and, and our connections that we have out in Hollywood, we're able to bring the best films. And I think keeping it at the amount, of, the number of films, we're not overwhelming people. And, and they're the best that, you know, the filmmakers are offering. And I think everything that we do from conversations to celebrating the composers, to celebrating diversity, to celebrating um, diversity, not only um, gender diversity, but also the African-American experience. I think that we do something that is so different from any other film festival. And I don't wanna mess with that formula. And I think that's what makes us so special. Susan? I, I echo what, what Sheila has said. And I, and I also want to say, we've just been so gratified from all the film goers that we've heard from who have said, this is our favorite weekend of the year. We love, I mean, I, I think that we know that we now have a community of committed cinephiles and festival movie lovers. And, so that's very important to that to us, and we take that very seriously. So I think in in the, in the future we we really we, we will be back together again, all of us. I, I feel very certain about that, and I hope it's next year. And and I think you'll we'll continue to try to um, push the envelope in terms of of fostering understanding between people, and bridging our differences and 
and, and providing an opportunity for, for dialogue, which I think is so important. And I think that films, films do that. They, they have a way of bringing people together and encouraging people to, to have some important conversations. You know, we also want you to be entertained and engaged too. So I think, um, you know, we're just, we're right now we're, we're getting ready for tomorrow's launch. Go to middlebergfilm.org. There's still lots of individual tickets left. I do want to say that this might be confusing, but we are, our tickets are limited even virtually, just the same way that tickets for a theater would. So if you see a film sold out, it's because, you know, the distributor has limited the, the number. Right. Um, but there's still so many terrific films that are, that are available. And um, we look forward to seeing you, Tim, uh, this year. And we look forward to welcoming all of our uh, movie lovers, either virtually or in person. I was going to say that, that uh, I will be out for opening day tomorrow. Um, it, it, as I said, it, I always look forward to this festival because it's a beautiful, you guys have it at a, such a wonderful time of the year, the fall out in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Beautiful, as you said earlier, Sheila, very relaxing uh, out at the Salamander. So I will be out there tomorrow for Nomad Land and Blight Spirit, uh, the double feature tomorrow. So you talked about the food. Thursday, this is. I'm sorry, Thursday. Go ahead. Yeah. So Thursday, yes, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the, the, the day is Wednesday, so it'll be Thursday tomorrow. So um, you, you talked about the food trucks. So there'll be food trucks available for people to get food at the drive-ins and on the Grand Lawn. Yeah. Okay. So anything else that people need to know who are coming out? I think uh, that we want to stress that everybody's health and safety, which Sheila said is the, is the number one priority. Right. There are no indoor in-person events or screenings whatsoever. Um, so everything is outdoor in the evening, uh, socially distant mask wearing temperature checks. And, um, and we just, uh, we're, we're excited and we're looking forward to, to, uh, seeing some great movies together. All right. The eighth annual Middleburg film festival, or as, or as you guys like to call it, Middleburg 2020. I'm like, mm -mm, I like eighth annual. I just want to, to, to make sure that they understand the history of what it is. Yeah. Um, Sheila, Susan, it is always a pleasure to, to, to see you guys, whether it's virtually, in person. I look forward to seeing both of you tomorrow. Sheila, I know you're going to be hard to find because you're all around the resort. Susan is usually in hiding somewhere, so you normally don't see Susan just in passing. But um, I will make no, a, a we'll great effort. You, we'll seek you out, Tim. <laughs> I, I know where you, I know where I can find you, Susan. Sheila's another story. But... Um, <laughs> Ladies, I want to thank both of you for doing this. This has become our annual tradition, and I'm glad that it continues. The 8th Annual Middleburg Film Festival kicks off tomorrow through Sunday. Accurate? Correct? That's it. And right. you guys have your windows. You've got your films. We'll tell them one more time, Susan, where they can go and look at the lineup and to buy tickets. If you go to middlebergfilm.org, you'll see it'll say 2020 Film Festival, you click on it, you'll see all the films and conversations and live Zoom chats and Tim Gordon's panel on Talk Back to the Critics, where you can just tell Tim exactly what you think of all the reviews that he's done. And, um, and then um, you can purchase a ticket. It's really very, very easy to do and easy to navigate. And if you, and we also have a, a help, uh, email and, and phone number if you, if you have any difficulty whatsoever. All right, ladies. Well, thank you for your time, and I will see you both tomorrow. With thank your you. mask. I will definitely have my mask, yes. Tim, I'm gonna have a, we're going to have a special Middleburg Film Festival mask for you. Well, thank Ooh. you. I will definitely take that, yes. MFF20. Ladies, you enjoy your day, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, okay. Tim. All right. All right. Bye. Take care.